Hello everyone, how's it going? Doctor Incompetent here and let's play some Midnight Protocol, shall we? I don't know much about this game, but it appears to be a game, like they say here, that is played entirely through the keyboard, and I think it's a hacking style puzzle kind of game? I'm not sure, uh, but let's find out. It seemed intriguing, and I wanted to boot it up and, and give it a look. All right, so we're going to go ahead and uh, simply start the game. And we're going to select a empty save and... Okay. Um, oh, it's a, it's a strategic kind of game. Um, I'm going to do the recommended way to play, which is turn-based, uh, because I prefer most things to be turn-based. I'm not really a Twitch gamer uh, in the sense of being quick for real-time stuff, so let's go. Budapest, huh? 2062. Wow. That's a specific date in the future. Charges against data dropped. In a surprise change of course, Undigisec has announced it will be dropping all charges against data, a prominent hacktivist at the center of several major anti-monopoly and transparency ops Data was arrested last year following an identity leak. Oh, okay. A press statement reads, After a thorough re-examination of all available evidence, the Digital Security Office cannot verify beyond reasonable doubt that the individual in our custody is responsible for the cybercrimes committed under that alias. Consequently, we see no elements that necessitate an extension of the arrest warrant. In layman's terms, data could have been anyone. Digisec's decision appears to validate widespread criticism that the case was built on shaky foundations. From the editorial team at thewire.org, data, wherever you are, whoever you are, keep fighting the good fight. Okay, so apparently we're in some kind of future world where uh, hacking is still a way to rebel against uh, the forces that are in power. And uh, Data... Is Data us? I'm wondering. Uh, or our mentor? We'll find out. Scanning drive. Okay, we're booting up our computer here. And, okay, um, there's a triangle, uh, and m.os loading. All right. Midnight protocol activated. Oh, I don't know what that means. Okay. Username. Oh, well, that's pretty simple. Oh, whatever I type, it's just typing in data. Enter password. I don't know. I just typed a bunch of stuff and entered it. Okay. It doesn't matter what you type. You just type the right thing and then you push enter. Welcome. This is your console. On the left are the different screens. Press the corresponding key to show the screen. Let's start by pressing E to bring up the email screen. All right, let's push E. And you can see here over on the left that has uh, main aspects of our system with the first letter or one of the letters in brackets and all caps indicating that is what we push to get it. And then there's some kind of like pseudo code running over there in the background. So we're going to push E for email. I like the music, I'll tell you that much. Very sci-fi, appropriate. Inbox, all emails you have received. Emails you can reply to are marked with a dot. Press enter to reply. So this is from Clover and it says, welcome back. Look, I'm done trying to talk you out of it. They went easy on you this one time and you want to get right back into it? Darn, Data, you're violating parole just getting anywhere near a deck. By the way, I love um, 
like in Neuromancer, when they refer to uh, computers or rigs that are used for hacking as decks, it just sounds good. Fine. I know there is no changing your mind anyway. I'm sending you back that old terminal you wanted me to have. It's pretty bare bones, but it should get the job done. Snail had his eye on some easy marks for you. You'll want the funds, I guess. Hey, Data, don't disappear on me again, okay? Be careful. Be safe. By the way, um, if there... You'll notice me changing some of the words at times when I'm reading things uh, that are different from the text. You can feel free to read those yourself. Um, there are things that I cannot say on YouTube videos without uh, attracting certain forces, so I... Let's just say clean things up. Press enter to respond. Thanks, Clover. Appreciate it. Um, easy marks? Really? I know. I mean, do I want easy marks? Uh, okay. So, press... So you can either just push tab to autocomplete, or you can just kind of pretend like you're typing. Like, and it's actually kind of fun. Um, I feel like Doogie Howser. This is great. You know I can do better than that. Enter. Address received. Mission at, uh, added to address panel. Okay. Clover's message provided you with a network access uh, address. You can use the address screen to see all available addresses. Cool. Um... And, alright, I can push A for address screen, and it says here you can select an address you have collected to initiate a hack on the network. Select the plug it in mission by pressing enter. Oh, I'm going to hack. So, I'm hacking back into the address that Clover emailed me from. Is that appropriate? Alright, plug it in. Initialize connection with network. Yes. Oh, my screen. Stand by, setting up. Okay, oh my. You have breached the network. A network consists of several nodes, two in this case. Your current position is the access node. You will always start on an access node. Ah, okay, interesting. The game is played over a series of turns. During your turn, you can perform two actions. You can spend an action to move, run, or remove a program, interface with a node, or exit the network. Your remaining number of actions is displayed in the upper right corner of your screen. You can move to an adjacent node by typing move, followed by the address of the node. Enter move F0 to travel to the finance node. Okay, interesting. All right. Um, so... There is a timer at the top of the screen that's ticking away. Um, just as a heads up, I'm going to be like discussing my thought process and thinking about stuff. And so I do not care about the timer at all uh, on this playthrough of the game. I'm just trying to figure it out and I'm not playing for stress. I like to be strategic and think things out. But it's great that that's there if you want to try to do a speed run. And there might be optional mission objectives later that require you to get lower. Uh, but this is kind of when I saw some screenshots of the game, it looked like this. And this is such a fun little, uh, I don't know what we would call this. It, it's a conceit, I suppose. It's a storytelling representation that we use for the business of hacking. And it exists in so many different video games and in movies. I mean, and it's done in a variety of ways, but they're all uh, these metaphors for the business of hacking. And, you know, you, you range from, like, Jurassic Park's I Know Unix to, uh, oh, what's the Michael Crichton disclosure with Michael Douglas, where he's hacking by going into virtual reality, you know, to, um, I'm thinking of, you know, games like Days X or uh, Bioshock or um, Shadowrun games, you know, anything where 
there you get a screen like this and you need to play a minigame or solve a puzzle to facilitate the art of hacking. But this is like more direct, like I'm typing things in. So I say move um, space F zero. So it's kind of like I'm actually, you know, pseudo with a lot of the extra stuff taken out doing a text-based adventure that involves hacking. Most nodes have a special interface action you can use. Your current node's interface action is explained at the bottom of the screen. The node you are on is a finance node. This node type contains financial records that can be funneled to your account. Use an interface action. Okay. So I'm gonna funnel records to my account from the finance node, great. All right, so input interface, okay. All right, so in this sense, I just wanted to test that. Um, it actually uh, does not auto-complete it for you. You have to type it and spell it correctly. But even when you start typing, you can see in the lower left in my command prompt there, uh, it it's puts the word that I'm trying to type right above me, so. I don't have to worry too much about spelling things. It's also displayed in the center of the screen. And I can drain 30 credits from this node to my personal account. So do I want to type interface drain? Um, good work. The ring around the financial node indicates how many credits remain. Oh, cool. You're out of action. So let's pass the turn to the network with an end command. All right. Uh-oh, the network. Don't hurt me, network. All right, end. Trace protocol. Tracing. Success. 0% chance of failure. During its turn, the network will trace your position. Once the trace bar in the top right corner of the screen is filled, the network will start to drain your credits, destroy your assets, or worse. Try to complete your objectives before the network trace is completed. All right. Drain the financial node before that happens. Use the interface command to, to drain the node again. Okay, so let's say... Now, if I just type interface, for example, do I need to type drain? No, you don't need to type drain. You just need to type interface, and it just does it. Great. This network has been picked clean. At any given time, you can use the exit command to leave the network. Note that exiting the network will also require an action. Ah, okay, you got a sandbag in action for leaving. Use the exit command now to end the mission. All right, so it looks like it's going to trace me in six turns. Exit. Are you sure? Once you leave a mission, you cannot replay it. Yes, I'm sure. Great. So I got an A+. Plus. So they do give you a score, and you can see that, you know, time is a factor. So I'll try to increase it but yeah oh look gray hat reputation gain that's funny so in 2062 the gray hats will still be dominating um okay or is it just black hats and white hats are there really no gray hats anyway uh all right we got 50 credits and we got an a plus you have another email okay let's check it it's back from, it's from Clover. Okay, yeah, I get it. Hardly worth the cycles. It's just that you spent a year AFK and stuff evolves fast. Your words, remember? Hey, I wasn't AFK. I just put that tag up so you wouldn't bother me. Snails looking into this kraken you're after. Can't hurt to keep a low profile until we have something concrete, right? Here's another equally dull one. Um... Give me something real. All right, good point. Good point, Clover. I'm just gonna push tab uh, instead of typing it out just to see what happens. Okay, good point. I'll keep my head down. Just let me know as soon as you have anything on Kraken. Give me all the goods on Kraken. Address received, mission added to the address panel. Clover gave you another address. Go to the address screen. Okay, so let me just take back what I said earlier. I'm not hacking into Clover's address. Clover is giving me addresses to hack into. All right, so I'm going to go to addresses, 
and I'm gonna go for easy mark. Initialize connection, you betcha. Let's do this. All right. Um, this network has two financial nodes. Ooh, double the money. Your objective is to drain both. Remember that you can use move to move between nodes and interface to interact with a node. End will pass the turn to the network. For now, the exit command has been disabled because they don't want me to prematurely exit. All right. Um, okay, so I need to go move. And do I need to actually type F0? No, I just moved to the only place I could move to. Um, okay, and so from here, I say interface. Yep. And we got 30 credits, and we say end. Boom, and they're trying to trace me. You could spend an action to run a program from your deck. The programs you bring on a mission will determine your strategy. You start a program by typing its name. For instance, the program Cloak will slow down the network's trace attempts. Type Cloak in your console to run it. Okay, so if I just type Cloak, uh, can I push Tab? Yeah, so once you have typed enough characters and the only autocomplete option is the one that you want, you can push Tab to finish it. That'll help you go faster too. Well done, when Cloak is active, you have a chance to evade the network trace that turn buying you more time. Your active programs appear on the left side of the screen. Okay. It's a 75% chance. It's pretty good. All right. An active program requires processing power. Indeed. You currently have eight processing slices. Mm, it's a pizza at your disposal. Right now, Cloak is using all eight. Cloak. The more slices assigned to a program, the more efficiently it will run. Oh, okay, yeah, then use it all. Continue draining those resources. Let's get that bag. All right, I'm just gonna do that, and boom, we got it. And we're gonna say end, bam. All right, they failed. Manually interfacing with a financial node is tedious process. The leech program can only be used on financial nodes and will automatically train them for you. Remember, you can run a program by typing its name. All right, so let's move, um, but I wanna move to F1, all right? So now that you see I push space after move in the lower left on my console, it says A0 or F1. So I can go back to the start or I go to F1. I'm gonna go to F1. Move is disabled. Um, oh, there's more credits here, whoops, okay. I thought it was like 50 like before. Okay, so let's t type in then um, our uh, drain. No, 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 what is uh, leech? Yeah, do that. Leech can't be started because cloak is eating up all of the available processing slices. The slice command can be used to re redistribute them. Each slice cloak four, uh, enter slice cloak four rather to reduce its slices to four. This will make Cloak less efficient, but frees up slices for Leech. Okay, so I wonder if efficiency uh, is reflected by efficacy. So let's try this. Um, slice Cloak 4. Yes, it, it, well, it scales exactly as you would expect. So half the processing power, half the efficacy, okay. Great. Um, redistributing slices does not take an action. Okay, thank goodness. So use it often. Now try running leech again. All right, so we're just gonna say leech, bam. And it says leeching 20 credits per turn. Leech is now installed on this node and will drain credits every turn, saving you actions. Assigning more slices to cloak makes the network trace slower, giving more to leech makes it drain credits faster. There are three commands you can use to manage your slices. Slice, slup, and slow down, I guess? Oh, okay, slice up and slice down. You'll learn about these as you go along, all right. You can reprogram or remove a program with the remove command. For instance, remove leech would remove leech. 
However, removing a program costs you an action. I see. Practice using Leech and Cloak to drain the rest of the credits. When you are ready, exit the network with the exit command. You can install multiple instances of Leech on different nodes. I was just wondering if I could do that. Okay, great. If you are stuck, use the help command to see all available commands. For information and examples on a specific command, enter help followed by the command name. For example, to get help on the slice command, type help slice. Fantastic. Okay, we're going to move then uh, to F1. It takes an action, but we will... Sp um, there's 40 credits left on the previous node, and so um, those will drain in two turns. All right, we have four turns to go. And I'm just going to go ahead and interface drain and take 30. Wait a minute, why is my leech no longer running? Did it take all the credits out? Um, okay. And end. Okay. And then let's see what's going on here. Where, where's all my programs? It just says scrambling trace. Um. There's... I guess this node's empty. So, I just want to exit, right? They're all gone. All the money's gone, I think. Yeah, we took it all. Great. I, I, the reason I didn't see Leech up there is because Leech was done. And so it auto-closes itself when it is done taking all the money. However, it does not redistribute its slices back to the cloak program. So half of my processing power was just gone. You have another email. The dot blinking next to the email command shows you that you have unanswered emails. Boom. All right, email. No worries. This is from Clover again. Will do. As soon as Snail digs something up, you'll hear about it. Still wondering, though. Yeah, Kraken put you behind bars. Ooh, this is why I want Kraken. But don't you think you're maybe rushing into things a bit? You had me pretty worried when you vanished. You trusted me before, so trust me on this one as well. Let me handle things for now. Anyway, in the meantime, here's a good payout. If Snail's search pans out, you might need the money soon enough, okay? Um, alright, I trust you. I'm gonna be nice. Alright, I trust you. I'll play... I'll stay off the radar for now. By the way, I don't know why, but it's really satisfying just pushing the keys uh, maniacally uh, and having the right stuff type out. Address received. Mission added to the address panel. So I keep getting money, right? It looks though that this is an RPG. Text-based adventure strategy game all mixed into one. In the sense that I think I'm going to be able to buy new programs and upgrade my deck and increase my capabilities, I hope. Let's go to addresses and just learn some more about the game. So this is called The Wall. A tip from Clover, a modestly protected network with financial and data, data nodes. So the first time with data nodes, um, the trace is at six. There's a binary wall ice uh, financial node and a data node. Let's do it. Yep. Okay. Move to the financial node. Press enter to continue. All right, so let's move. Ouch. This connected uh, connection is protected by ice. When you try to cross a protected connection, you trigger the ice. There are many types of ice, each with its own effect. This binary wall, for instance, stops you dead in your tracks and increases the network trace. 
other ice may let you pass, instead hindering your progress in other ways. Okay. Breaker programs help you deal with ice. You have one in your deck. Dagger. Run the dagger program now. Alright, so... You have to forgive me because so much of my knowledge of um, this hacking world comes from William Gibson's Neuromancer, and all of this language is directly in that book. I don't know if he established that or was borrowing that from a pre-existing context that, you know, Bruce Sterling or him concocted in previous novels leading up to that. Um, or if those were actual hacker terminologies that he used, he borrowed that vocabulary for the novels. Anyway, um, I feel like Case, basically, in Neuromancer, hacking into stuff, and it's great. But I also get a lot of my hacking stuff from uh, the, just the Shadowrun universe, early Super Nintendo Shadowrun, and the Shadowrun uh, role-playing game. Okay. So it's fun to see ice and breaker programs and protocols and all this cool stuff. All right, so let's see. Um, let's go ahead and uh, we can interface and reroute. Oh, that's cool to decrease the trace by zero. But let's go ahead and run dagger. And we're going to run dagger, I guess, on F0. Just like Leech, wow, look at that animation. Dagger will operate every turn, breaking down the ice. As usual, you can speed up the process by giving it more processing slices with the slice command. So I'm doing um, 15 damage times three equals 45 to an, a binary wall with 75 hit points. It is an RPG. I'm fighting this with daggers with, you know, digital daggers. It's a good time. Let's wait for a dagger to finish off the ice. Once it's down, move to the node. All right, so we'll just end the turn. And they're tracing us. Dagger. It's cool. So you can see the turn order up there, of course, which isn't too complicated, but dagger um, operated both at the end, of, like right when I ran the program, and then before my turn even begins in terms of my action. So that's convenient. So let's move. Good work. There's another node here that we haven't seen before. A data node. Move to it. If you like, you can first clear out the financial node or drop a leech on it. All right, how many credits are here? 80 credits? Okay, let's go ahead and leech right here. And we're going to... Um, I'm not running cloak, by the way. Shouldn't I? I guess I can't. Um, I used all my actions. But this way, it'll get it in two turns, so. Okay. But my trace is... I've got problems here with my trace, so I need to... Uh... Yeah, I need to run cloak. Now, isn't Leech running? I mean... Or did Leech... Did, did Leech stop running? I thought Leech just kept running. No, it's... Oh, it did. That's what I don't get. That's why I keep messing up with it. So it runs immediately, just like I said before, when you activate the program, and then at the start of the turn. So we tapped this already. So we don't even need to... Um, I mean, I do want to... Cloak is running. So I need to just move. And I want to move to uh, D0. You're now on a data node. Data nodes can hold all sorts of interesting or valuable information. By interfacing with a data node, you can download its contents to your terminal. Remember, you can always check what happens when you interface with the node at the bottom of the screen. Download the data from the data node with the interface command. And this is true. So like in the box in the bottom center, it tells you what interface is going to do. And right now it does one thing. Download the data bit from this node. Once started, download will automatically complete in two turns. All right. So um, interface. Oh, no turns. Okay. And 
Great. It failed to trace us, so we got an extra turn here. Good. Downloading information can take some time. The display next to the node will show how many turns are left before the download is complete. Wait for the download to finish. Cool. But I don't have to wait on that square, right? I kind of want to move back to A0 and do the, the uh, interface that will decrease the trace. I just want to try it. Uh-huh. All right, they failed. We got one turn left. I'm going to move over here. And I'm going to move to A0. All right, interface reroute. Uh, once permission... Decrease the trace by three. Cannot reduce a full trace bar. Okay. So as long as, you know, you're lower, you can just do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to try it. Cool. So we just... All the trace went away. And our cloak program is just crushing it. And now we're done downloading. Um, and we can exit. Splendid. You can now exit the network. That's cool. Let's get out of here. All right, we got 80 credits, we got an A plus, boom. All the data bits you download from data nodes can be viewed in the information tab. Press I to view the information tab. Okay, this database contains all nodes and ice you have encountered. It also shows all the data you have collected from data nodes. Data can lead to new missions, programs, etc. Press enter with the data bit selected to process it. Okay. Um, all right, so we're in the information screen and we have a ghost network encrypted content. And I'm just gonna push enter and we're trying to unpack it. And we decrypted it. The data bit has given you a network address. Go to the address panel. It says from Daniel to Chris. I had the IT guy set up the ghost network. He threw in a hangman program for free to tighten up security. Here's how I understand it. The system node monitors the base network for transactions, intercepts them, and skims a bit off the top before forwarding the transaction to the actual recipient. Obviously, we need to cut him in, so I offered him a 10% cut. This is going to make us rich, dude. Cheers, Daniel. All right, so these guys are running uh, the program from the movie Office Space to glean money from transactions and funnel it into a bank account to make them rich. It goes well for them. I'm sure it's going to go well for Daniel and Chris. Uh, what are logs? Um, keeps a record of your exploits and what to do next. Okay. So, Honeypot, uh, Kraken was responsible for doxing you. I don't know what doxing means. I guess that means turning you in? Why? To answer that question, you need to find him first. Clover can help. Follow the trail left by the data bit. Uh, and that's all I know, is that I need to be doing mission Honeypot. So the game tells you what you need to be doing, and then I go to addresses. Some missions have specific requirements. For this mission, you will need to equip a new program sniffer you can manage your deck in the deck panel press d to access the deck panel okay d deck here you can manage your program loadout you can equip up to five programs navigate with the arrow keys to equip the program move to the, the selection to it then press the number of the slot where you want to install it to unequip move the selection to a deck slot and press enter okay so um i want to equip this oh no that is equipped um i want cloak yes and i have this is sniffer reveals hidden ice on an adjacent node sniff sniff okay um it's hard coded you can't change slices manually interesting it has an active set of it has a cooldown and it has a daemon, which it means it cannot be removed manually huh all right but i'm gonna equip it so we now have cloak Dagger, Leech, and Sniffer. Crit percent on Dagger is 15%. That's awesome. Cool. Minimum slices, slices it takes. Fantastic. So we're done. So now we've altered our deck, and we can go back to the address screen, and we can go for the Hangman program 
uh, or the hangman address and try to use our new sniffer program to get in here, finding more information about Kraken. But I think after doing uh, a few missions, seeing the deck, unpacking a lot of the game's uh, content, at least some of the game's content, I know there's a lot more, I mean, hardware, black market, intranet, apps, settings, etc. Um, just seeing the game and getting a glimpse of it, I think this is a good place to end the episode, and I'm really curious what you guys think of this. Have you played this before? And would you recommend it? I'd love to hear that in the comments below. But also, if you've never played it, never even heard of it, tell me what your reaction is to this game in the comments below. Like, do you think this is cool? Do you think it's fun? I myself have to say that I think this is a surprisingly satisfying game to play. Uh, I like the feel of it. You know, the story is very, very cryptic and brief, but the gameplay itself and the puzzle and RPG element to it with a narrative driving you, you make money, you get a ranking. I, I don't know, all of the elements seem to come together for me to make this uh, a compelling title. And, and it, it's, it's simple in its presentation. The fact that you don't use a mouse is really interesting, but something about it is just drawing me in and I'm wondering if I'm alone, if you think this is just boring and not cool. Uh, but that's totally fine, of course. I'd love to just chat with you guys in the comments, so please um, leave some feedback in the comments below in terms of what your reaction is to this game so we can chat. If you liked the video, please give it a like, and I will check you guys next time. Thanks again for watching. Take care.